Hi, I'm Brett Laheed, University Archivist and Digital Curator at the University of Winnipeg Archives. In the archives, we have a number of physical and digital resources that might prove useful in the study and research of systemic racism and equality for Black and Indigenous people and other people of color. I would like to highlight a few of our materials relevant to these topics and demonstrate how you can access these materials via our website and incorporate them into your research. We've recently devoted space on our website to highlight the physical and digital resources comprising our BIPOC collections. Simply visit archives.uwinnipeg.ca, click Our Collections on the left side menu, and then BIPOC Collections. Here you'll see an overview of our collections, as well as links to relevant online collections and archival collections, as well as links to additional external resources. When you click Online Collections, you'll be presented with a list of digital resources featuring content created by or pertaining to BIPOC people. Simply click on each link to access the resource. In this video, I want to highlight two resources in particular. The first is the West Central Streets Digital Collection. West Central Streets was a newspaper published between 1995 and 2011 with the goals of attempting to create a sense of community in Winnipeg's West Central neighborhood and to combat the negative stereotypes attributed to the community in mainstream media. The paper was written and produced by people in the community and highlighted many of the challenges they faced as well as their successes. As a large proportion of this neighborhood, over 20% in the 2016 Winnipeg Census data identified as Indigenous or Black, and over half of the population identified as a visible minority. This resource is useful in examining many of the issues facing the BIPOC population from their perspective. In the nearly 20 years since West Central Street stopped publishing, it is interesting to see that many of the issues they were combating at the time, homelessness, poverty, racism, social welfare inequalities are still being experienced by this population today. The digital collection includes every issue published. The collection can be browsed by clicking on the browse button underneath the collection description. Each issue has also undergone optical character recognition to allow users to search the text of each issue via the search box at the top of the page. A keyword search result set will not only highlight which issues feature this keyword, but also the exact page or pages on which the word can be found and the number of instances of the word's use. Here we can see that in this issue, the word racism can be found eight times and on page 10 of this issue. The page or issue can be downloaded via this button. Or if you have access to a printer, it can also be printed here. Below the image is the descriptive information consisting of the issue's publication information. The second digital collection that I would like to highlight is the Racism in Winnipeg digital collection. This is a web archive pertaining to the January 2015 Maclean's Magazine article proclaiming Winnipeg as Canada's most racist city. The collection consists of archived websites that range from the original online publication of the Maclean's article to official responses made by the City of Winnipeg's municipal government, including OneWinnipeg.ca, to public responses made online by Winnipeg residents, and other responses made from other news media outlets. The collection is curated using the Internet Archive's Archive at Service, which allows archive staff to select websites to be a part of a collection and create snapshots of that site on a given day. This tool allows archives to ensure the preservation of and continued access to websites, even when they are no longer accessible on the Internet, and organize them into thematic collections. To access the collection, click on the link on the archive's website, which takes you to the homepage for the web archive in Archive It. 
At the top of the page, you are presented with some descriptive information about the collection. Below that are a list of the websites that comprise the collection. To the left are a series of facets that allow you to limit your search by a number of factors, including date, creator, and subject. When you click on a URL, you are presented with a screen detailing how many snapshots or captures of the site have been made, as well as the dates on which those captures were created. Click on one of the dates to view how that website looked on that particular day. In this way, the service allows the user to trace a site over time. Depending on the complexity of the site, there may be a slight delay in loading an archived website. Once it is loaded, you can then interact with the site as it appeared on a given day, although some content may not be accessible. These and several other digital resources are freely available to anyone at any time. I also want to mention that the archives is currently compiling a Black Lives Matter web archive, which we hope to make available very soon. In addition to the digital resources available online, the archives BIPOC collections page also includes links to descriptions of the physical collections by and about BIPOC people in our holdings. Click on archival collections to see a list of these collections. Each link brings you to a description of the archival material in Maine, the Manitoba Archival Information Network. Maine is a database containing thousands of descriptions of material located in archives all over Manitoba. You can browse or search for archival material within our institution or across Manitoba. I'm going to click on the Congress of Black Women of Manitoba Incorporated Fall to show you what a description looks like in more detail. Some of the language in archival descriptions is a little jargony. A fond is a word archivists use to describe all of the content naturally created or accumulated by an individual group or organization. So when we're looking at a description of the Congress of Black Women of Manitoba fond, we are looking at a description of the cumulative total of all of the records in our holdings created by this organization. The description provides all of the contextual information pertaining to the creation of the records necessary to fully understand the records. This type of information includes information about the creator or creators of the records, the dates in which they were created, the record keeping systems used to maintain them over time and how they came to the archives. In addition, archival descriptions include information about the content of the records, including the volume of material, the types or mediums contained therein, as well as what the records themselves detail. Many of these descriptions include a link to a more detailed finding aid for the collection, which includes a box and folder listing of the material. These can be found in the field labeled uploaded finding aid. Now we see the names and dates of individual folders, as well as descriptive notes and their corresponding box and folder numbers. Each finding aid is keyword searchable in your browser. I'm going to do a search for anti-racism in this particular finding aid. Here we see that there are three references to anti-racism in the contents of this finding aid. Should you be interested in the contents of a folder, make a note of the collection or phone name the accession number, as well as the box and folder number and notify the archives. We will then work with you to provide access to the material. I hope this has been helpful in demonstrating the ways in which the material in the University of Winnipeg archives can be used in the study of systemic racism and the struggle for equality for BIPOC people. Thank you.